Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. And my name is Kristina Skoglund. I work as a Technical Solutions Specialist for Cisco Denmark, and I'm the North Programmability Lead. Christy, it's really cool to have you here. Uh, I've said this in a few different videos throughout the course of the week, but uh, this is my first time traveling overseas ever, so it's been bright. It's been super cool. I, I've, I, live in the, I live on the west coast of the United States, and I've gone to Mexico a few times, but I've never come overseas. So everything about this experience is like first time. It's fantastic. Um, and this is the first time, you know, I run a particular group here for DevNet, um, and you've been a part of it a couple of times. We've met virtually a couple of times, but it's the first time getting to meet in person. And we were having some really cool conversations in the, in the backstage. And I wanted to kind of ask you, how did you come to be in the position you're at at Cisco right now? Like, we can talk about your, your title right now, but how did you get to this point? Like, where did you start your Cisco journey and also your journey towards poor gameability? How did you even get here? Um, so my Cisco journey started in actually here in Amsterdam. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was in the graduate program, the CSEP program. And then after one year in Amsterdam, I was reloc uh, relocated to Denmark where I started as an SE in uh, uh, GBS, global, global virtual sales. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I got the opportunity to join the field in the enterprise networking team. And there we didn't really have anyone else who could cover programmability in kind of inspire uh, the customers around that. So since I had some sort of uh, programming background, my manager was basically, hey, you want to do that? And I was like, sounds fun. I have a feeling that conversation was a little bit a little bit less of, um, do you want to do that? And more of like, you're going to do this. Yeah, you're to <laughs> to totally. It was like, so we have the, an event in two weeks. You're going to cover that. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, so when you when when that when you were sort of voluntold that you're going to be doing this now, um, I'm sure there was a little bit of like anxiety that came with that. But what what actually motivates you and inspires you to get into those conversations with customers or partners or whoever you're talking to? Like, what about the idea of programmability or automating things gets you excited to have it? Because this isn't something that we just naturally like. Oh, great! There's this new and unknown thing that I haven't dealt with before. What what about that actually motivates you? So I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to go back to that first event, right? So my manager, he told me, he was like, okay, we have this event in two, two weeks. I want someone to cover from Denmark to cover programmability for us. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. And that first event was what got me into programmability and DevNet and like coming out and motiv motivating uh, this whole programmability and automation journey. Um, and the reason for that was that I saw, I was seeing people that had 30 years of experience in the in the in the business, right? Um, network engineers, and they, they were coming to learn something new. And they were super excited about it. And like they were asking questions, trying to learn new things of doing stuff. And for me, that was super inspiring that you, like, uh, like after 30 years of doing the sem same thing all over again, you just want to kind of uh, challenge yourself. Yeah. And uh, for me, that was super inspiring. And uh, yeah, that's what kept me going. That's very cool. I, you know, I, I was in, for most of my career until I came to Cisco, I was a network engineer. So like, I, the idea of automating things was always exciting. I tried to pick up a, a book on Perl a very long time ago and realized how quickly my brain melted when I tried to figure out like, I don't know what these words are saying or how to use this. And we didn't, DevNet wasn't a thing at that time. Um, but what's so interesting about that is I hear this type of story from customers and people, or just attending here at the event who come through the DevNet zone. Um, on a regular basis, and it, so it's really interesting to hear from your perspective how that's impacted working with customers. Um, you were mentioning a couple of situations where you've had that that sort of conversation when we were talking before, uh, where you've like talked to a customer in a group. Um, what's it been like to be maybe pick a customer example where you've talked to a group of people, and there's some people who are like, no, 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 we're network engineers, we we do click ops, we just finger ops, we just type on keyboards, that's what we do, and maybe somebody comes in or something disrupts that and makes them go. Well, maybe we can do this a little bit different way. What what has that conversation been like? So I have a, your question reminds me of a one particular customer experience that I had, where I was at the customer and they had just had a new hire uh, of a younger guy who was yeah he knew some programming and he was like okay so we can actually play around with this like we don't have to use these standard ways of managing the network right and these old networking guys they were just like no we're not going to do that uh they didn't want to touch it mm -hmm. they were like it's going to break it we're not going to do that uh and the thing was that one of these in the let's say the older group like the more traditional group they were like okay so let let's hear what he has to say so I entered that conversation and we kind of built a bridge between these two groups mm -hmm. uh, together and that was just so inspiring to see and that customer today 
is actually really advanced in the way that they, ha they have started to using automation tools in the way that they're managing. And they're kind of, you know, they, they're utilizing the new, you know, the younger person that is uh, that has the programming background, but they're they're kind of complementing him with all of their knowledge because he can't automate without knowing what the networking stuff does, right? So so that for me is just. I love, okay, I, I love that story. There's a whole bunch we can unpack. We don't have enough time to unpack everything, but there's a, one key part of that that I, I adore, which is it's a conversation that's come up a lot, and we, I've actually had people ask this directly. I'm a CCIE. I'm not, but person says I'm a CCIE or what have you. Like, I don't, I'm gonna, if I start using automation or we put these things to simplify, I'm gonna automate myself out of a job. And the way I've always thought about it, trying not to be antagonistic about it, but just being pragmatic, I, I usually would say to that person, if your only value to your organization is how good you can type commands at a, key, at a, at a command line, you're not, that's not a value. Anybody can look at a, a document that says, type this command to take this action. Anyone can do that and, type, and learn. Your value, let's say as a CCIE, for example, but someone who's you know, the more experienced, the traditional, let's say the traditional, the not traditional. the old, but the traditional, um, their experience with working with these things is what allows them to help find creative solutions to the problems the business has and that they need to solve for to make the business move forward. It's not typing commands, it's I know how to solve problems. And your example that you just gave where the more traditional group is willing to listen to somebody who says, I have some new tools we can implement that might help solve some of these problems and they can teach that person. To me, that's, that's almost exactly what the, all of this is really about. Yeah, of course, because I mean, you can't automate something that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. right. Like you need to understand the whole workflow. You need to understand what the goal is mm -hmm. if, for you to be able to automate that. And if you don't have that knowledge, which the traditional group has, you can't do much. Right. Like you can be the super programmer in Python and uh, I don't know what, whatever programming language you do, but without that knowledge, you won't get long. Absolutely, and there's there's so much in what a network engineer does on a daily basis that is repetitive. It's the same thing over and over again. And as people, psychologically, our, our humans, our brains don't work well with repetitive tasks where we have to do the exact same thing every single time, every day. We do really well when it's something new and different that we have to wrap our head around. And so the idea of automation is really, at least the way I take it, and kind of what you're describing, is how can these tools help take that stuff out of someone's brain? Here, let's just let a computer do that over and over again so that you can put the rest of your cycles into what's a real problem this company has or the infrastructure has that we have to deal with. Um, so as we kind of wrap up, I'm curious from you, what is it you're most excited about right now, learning more about or talking to customers about? Like, what's the thing in this automation realm that like, gets, you, gets you really pumped and you're excited about? Mm, I would say, test-driven automation. Ooh. Yeah, learn more about how to design tests to make sure and you implement that in the way that you push down configuration changes to your network, just as we have been doing in software development for a long time. Mm -hmm. Automate the way that you test all of the changes before you pr uh, push it to production. Now, if you can get smarter in that and learn more about that, I think you will definitely be able to leverage that. I'm hearing some Pi ATS someplace in there. Ooh, I'm getting there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Christina, it's been so cool to have you. Thank you so much. And by the Thank way, for everyone watching, this is her first interview, so you did fantastic. Thank you for being here. Um, really appreciate it. And thanks for everybody for watching. If you want to find any of the additional content we have, go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live.